Okay, so what we're gonna do right now is just talk about some fundamental finger exercises that I think that everybody should work on um, to just try and develop basic strength and, um, and speed and dexterity between your hands. So the first thing to understand is, is the right hand. Um, I try and teach what's called a three minute picking technique and what you do is you try and do down strums and then you try and do alternate picking uh, for three straight minutes. You try not to stop. And the reason I chose three minutes is simply because most people can do something kind of out of their element for 20, 30, 45 seconds and then they start kind of losing it after that. Um, so really the goal here is, is to be able to do it all the way for three minutes without stopping. If you think of it this way, like if you're if you're working out um, and you're at the gym, we're not trying to bench press 250 pounds once or twice. We're trying to lift a weight over and over and over and over again to develop those muscles. That's what you're looking for here. It's not a matter of trying to do something really fast for a very short amount of time. It's really not going to do you any good. You have to be able to do it for a long period of time if you're playing in a band or something and you're playing, you know, multiple songs or something like that or you're playing for 45 minutes or two hours or three hours or whatever. So the goal here is, is to be able to choose a speed that feels relatively comfortable to you to be able to do your down picking consistently without stopping. So what I'm gonna do is use the metronome here. I've got my metronome. Now let's just say hypothetically I choose the speed 152, which means this is clicking 152 times. What I'm gonna do is play eighth notes down picking. So I'm gonna be going one, two, 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 like this. And I want to do that over and over and over for three straight minutes. I can time myself, look at the clock, figure out when it is, and see how I feel by the time I get to the end. If I only make it a minute in and I start losing it, or a minute and a half or whatever, then it's too fast. I need to slow down that metronome. Now there's two things you have to understand about practice. Number one is honesty, and number two is ego. The problem with a lot of these exercises is people always feel horrible about, horrible about themselves when they have to slow down the metronome, like they're doing something wrong or you know, whatever. You have to understand that the, the goal with learning how to play isn't you against anybody else, it's you against you. And so the most important thing is, is every day you're trying to be better than you were yesterday, um, similar to life, really. But um, it's the, so the the metronome are just numbers. It's just a, an infinite infinite amount of amount of times that we can play different things. And so what you're doing is you're taking, for instance, 152. If that's too fast, you need to slow it down a little bit, and then try it there, and find your spot. Okay. That's the other part, is making sure that when you're playing, you're not kidding yourself that you can actually do something when you can't. You know, if you try and play along and it's not working, you need to realize the fact that it's not working and you need to try something else. So when you're playing, you know, if I'm trying to play along with this, and I'm not doing it, I need to realize the fact that I'm not doing it and I need to try and set it at a speed that I can do. Now, the other thing you have to understand about technique exercises, they're not going to get better every day. They're not going to get better every week. Sometimes they don't get better every month. They take time. But once they get better, they get better. And that really is the goal. That's why I think there's a lot of musicians out there, a lot of guitar players that really don't spend any time on this stuff because they expect to see immediate results. And when they don't, they get frustrated and then they don't want to do it, which is fine, but then don't expect to do it. So the goal is to take these exercises and, and practice them on a daily basis over and over and over and over again and allow time and patience and determination and all those other things to, to bring this out in you, to, to keep trying to get comfortable with, you know, being able to play faster, learning how to relax in your arm when you play. You know, part of the goal of being able to play faster is not tightening up, it's learning how to loosen up, even though you want to tighten up because you feel those muscles tightening. It's learning how to move your pick as little as possible, okay, and try and loosen everything up. The other part is remembering to hold the pick towards the front of the pick, and don't turn the pick so much. I get so many students that turn the pick so the pick is sitting almost 90 degrees from the string. Don't do that. You don't. If you're going to turn the pick, all you need to do is turn it just a little bit, and it'll cut through that string. But the more you turn it, the less percussive sound you get. <laughs> See, it just starts kind of sounding like the slicing thing. You want to make sure that you're, you're picking down. So you set your metronome, whatever. Let's try uh, 168 here. So we're going. 
and do that for three minutes. Now here's the deal. Then we move on to doing alternate picking. Okay. With alternate picking, what we're going to do is we're going to start off doing exactly the same speed that we're doing the downs at. Normally we would think of doing alternate picking as twice as fast, but the problem is until you've developed the actual ability to down up pick comfortably, going fast isn't going to help you. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stay at 168 here. And I'm going to go exactly the same speed I was doing those downs. Now, it's going to feel a little slow, obviously, but what I'm focusing on is how it feels to do the down and the up and trying to get them to sound similar in dynamic, similar in volume, and attack, I should say. I want to get used to being able to do those down and ups comfortably. If you keep getting stuck on the up strum, which happens a lot, the problem is you got to rethink how you're how you're picking. Sorry about that. How you're thinking about picking that string. For instance, when I'm doing downs, my wrist has a tendency of laying kind of like this. When I do down ups, I pop up just a little bit like this. So now I'm picking the string over here at sort of a 90 degree angle on both sides. So I'm getting the same picking attack both on downs and ups. If I left it here, I'd have a tendency of going underneath the string and I'd kind of get stuck like that. Now I could leave it here and kind of pick at the side of the string, but that doesn't feel very comfortable for me. When I come up here, it feels more comfortable up there. Okay, so that's the first thing. The second thing is, is legato technique. Okay, so with our right hand, we've, we've learned to do down picking for three minutes, down up picking for three minutes using the metronome, doing two per click. You know, if you get to the point where you can max out a, a metronome that usually goes to 208, then you go back down to 104 and you do four per click. And if you ever max that out, then you go back down to 104 and you do eight per click. I mean, it just keeps going infinitely. It doesn't make any difference. Um, anyway, that's what those are. So then the right hand, or excuse me, the left hand, what you're doing is a set of legato exercises in which you're trying to utilize all the, the uh, finger combinations in two groups. So for instance, what I would do is I would go to the fifth fret of the third string, I would do a set of hammer-ons and pull-offs with my middle finger. Trying to hammer and pull as fast as I can for a total of, and this is up to you, I would definitely start with 20 seconds though. So for 20 seconds straight, you're gonna hammer and pull as hard as you can, as fast as you can without stopping. This whole exercise that we're gonna be doing requires no picking whatsoever, it's all legato. Now, when you first start off, it's going to feel really easy, but I guarantee you by the time you get to the end, you're going to be having a really tough time. So what you're doing is hammer on pull off from one to two for 20 straight seconds. Then without stopping, you go to three. So you're doing one to three for 20 straight seconds. And without stopping, you go to one to four for 20 straight seconds. Then without stopping, you set your middle finger down because your first finger was right here. You set this down and now you're going to do hammer ons to two to three for 20 straight seconds. Then you're going to do hammer-ons from second finger to fourth finger. You're going to be feeling it by this time. And then you're going to do third finger to fourth finger. So what's happening is you're going one, two, one, three, one, four, two, three, two, four, three, four. So you're doing all the two finger combinations in one legato exercise, each one for 20 seconds. So again, you wait till the clock gets to the 12 and then you start. After 20 seconds, move on. After 20 seconds, move on. After 20 seconds, set this finger down and move on. Move on. After 20 seconds, you set that down and move on. You're doing all the combinations. And again, what you're trying to do is get sound. You're trying to hit it as hard as you can and flick it, pull off as hard as you can to keep that thing moving. Okay? You're going to do that for 20 straight seconds a piece. And again, you're going to feel it in these muscles if you're doing it right. If you're not doing it hard enough, not doing it fast enough, um, or not doing it long enough, you're not really going to feel anything. So that's the first exercise. Then what you can do with that is you can break those down. Like let's say some days you want to just practice um, two to four or two to three and two to four, those two. You might just practice those. See, the, the disadvantage of always starting with the first finger is by the time you get to the third finger, you're exhausted. It, sometimes start backwards. Start with your third finger and then go to the second finger and then go to the first finger and work your way back. 
through all of them. So by the time you get done, you've already done the really hard ones. You're ending with the easier ones. So that's another thing you can do. And then the last thing to do is dexterity exercises. Now you have to remember there's a million exercises out there. The problem with that is, is simply it's too much information for most people. They work on something for a little bit and then they get bored and then they move on and they work on something for a little bit. So they never really learn to get really, really good at something. They just do a little bit of something and then move on, which may be some of your guitar lessons, for instance, or things that you've been learning. You don't spend enough time on something to really absorb it and continue moving forward. And so it's really important to do that. Um, so what I've done here is I'm just looking for core exercises, not trying to make a thousand different exercises, but just basic ones that you can do every day that will get you stronger. Okay, the next exercise is a dexterity exercise between the two hands, and this is simply going one, two, three, four. When you get to the top, you're going to move up one fret. You need to move up. I can certainly do that with a metronome. Let's say I set a metronome. You see? So I could do that exercise with the metronome again trying to build that up. Okay, so I'm doing one, two, three, four, all the way up. Okay, and then turning around doing four, three, two, one. Now, first question a lot of people have is, well, can I go backwards this way and then forwards this way? You can do whatever you want. It's just, again, understand, don't make 50 exercises when you're only, you're not gonna do any of them. You know, you can do one, four, two, three, or two, four, one, three, and all kinds of mathematical things that you could do, and that's great. But understand when you play scales, generally a scale goes up. <laughs> And it goes back down. So when you're playing, you know, you might play inside and out. But when you're playing faster passages, you know, a lot of times those just move up and down, back and forth like that. So that's why it's really important to get used to doing forward and backward. And yeah, all the other ones are important too, but start with those. Okay, the next thing to learn how to do is another dexterity pattern, but this one is working on three note per string patterns, because what we just did was four note per string doing one, two, three, four. So this one's gonna be a three note per string, and what we're doing is, uh, again, the fret wouldn't make any difference. I'm gonna go up to the 12th fret of the second string. I'm gonna play 12, 13, 15, which means I'm playing first finger, second finger, uh, pinky. And the goal here is I'm playing down, up, down. So I'm alternate picking, okay? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach onto the first string, okay, uh, 12th fret, with an upstroke. So I'm going down, up, down, up. Now, that's the really important part to get of this is learning how to alternate pick, doing down, up, down, up. Now, again, there are people out there that will say, well, you don't have to do that. You can do what's called economy picking. And economy picking is kind of where you down up wherever you feel like it. And again, whatever floats your boat. If that's what works for you, that's great. But don't choose to do something like that because you can't do it another way. Okay, what makes logical sense about alternate picking the way I'm doing it right now is it doesn't matter what string you're on, it doesn't matter what fret you're at, it doesn't matter where you are in a sequence, you can just drop into doing down and ups. And you're never thinking about whether something is a down or an up, you're just playing. Um, so it makes logical sense. So, again, if you're picking a different way then, and it's working for you, then great. If it's not working for you, and again, these are patterns that you want to do to get strong and to get fast. That's what you're looking for. Get Certainly uh, play clean, too. But Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to go down, up, down, up. So we're attaching onto that one, then we're going to come back down like this. So what you're trying to do is get used to being able to go down, up, down, up, down, up, and then it starts all over. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Now because this pattern has six notes, if I was to use a metronome, I'm probably going to think of it as triplets. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. 
And what's really nice about that is I know every time that clicks, I gotta be. I gotta be on those notes, okay? So another really great one. So that's a three note per string pattern that you could practice, okay? And you can do those anywhere. Right now I'm doing it at the 12th fret using one, two, and four. Well, I could also do it using one, three, and four. Okay, and if I don't wanna be at the 12th fret, that's entirely up to you. You can go wherever you want and do those exercises. I'm just staying on the top two strings because it's easier for me. Uh, to visualize, I've done it there all along, but you, know, you can go to any old and do them wherever you want. So anyway, those are your threes. Lastly, you've got your twos, and what I would certainly recommend for your twos is learning your pentatonic scale and playing your pentatonic scale with a metronome again. So. What I'll do is I'll take this and I'll just practice, for instance, maybe two strings going like this. Or maybe I'll go. Or maybe backwards. back and forth like that. So that's what I want you to start thinking about is how to get comfortable with being able to play groups of four, three, and we're gonna use this pattern for now, and two, which we could just take that primary pentatonic scale and start with that. Okay, now yes, there's other positions and all those sorts of things, but for now, that would be a great group of exercises that you could do on a daily basis. So hopefully that helps you a little bit with exercise ideas.